good afternoon everyone and welcome back to my channel on YouTube and welcome to Azeta Corsa Competizione. Today's video is about the VR experience. I know if you are a subscriber to the channel you would have seen a number of videos posted uh, with me using VR but because of that I do get comments from people asking how the VR is getting on um, because it is a concern for a lot of people. They compare it to the uh, original Azeta Corsa and it's nowhere up to, to, to spec basically. So today's video I'm just going to be taking a few settings from within the game and we're also going to be adjusting a file as well so that we can maximise what we have in the VR experience to the best that we can get from the game RPC and the VR headset that you might be using. So yeah, without further ado, uh, let's have a look at this. So what you first need to do is look for the Windows No Editor folder, which can be found in your AC2 folder. It's not in a Steam folder, it's like in your hard drive. Once you've found that, you need to open up the engine.ini file which you can open up in your Word or Notepad. And this is what, if it's highlighted in blue, is what you paste into that. Um, I've left it in the description below if you want to put that in. But that sort of just tries to smooth things out, slightly changes the colouring, uh, shadowing, things like that, all within your VR experience. If we move on to the settings which are in the game itself, what we're looking at is realistically, I appreciate that everyone's got different computers, different CPUs, different GPUs, and yeah, it it's quite a difficult one really to judge just simply because everyone's just got a different setup. This is what works for me. I'm running an i7, uh, 6700 and a 1060 GPU maybe a bit more of a powerful processor but a tiny bit less inferior GPU but anyway we pretty much ignore screen resolution full screen v-sync um, and resolution scale those don't mean anything view distance that's basically looking at things like the trees in the distance on the track if you select that to be low those trees are not going to be there or the details not going to be there so again it's entirely up to you i put that as mid shadows shadows is a massive fps killer it can really affect how uh, smooth and how many frames per second you're getting shadows are basically things like around the car and uh, on the track and within the cockpit because it's such a drain on the fps i've got that as low anti-aliasing and the aliasing anti-aliasing type we can ignore the effects are things like rain so if you do have rain on if you select things like low then the quality of the rain and what appears is not as high quality so things like that again in vr doesn't really make a difference post processing again if you are in the menu and you scroll from low to high you'll see the colors and the textures a bit of like things like inside the cockpit change for me it's just it actually makes the car a bit brighter inside so i've got that down to low again we're sort of these all what i'm saying so far is all of these have a effect on the fps at, at some way shape or form and if you want smooth vr then you need to really have those quite low um sharpness kind of says it all really it's regarding you know what you can see things like the cockpit you know the sharpness of that foliage again does it really matter that the grass is not cut like Wimbledon not really so again again we set that at low textures that's sort of like the car so if you're driving past a car do you want the sponsorship to be high quality or do you want it to be quite low quality so it's a bit blurry mm, again it's, it's nice to have but do you really need it? Again, it's a massive FPS killer, but I've got that at mid. Then pretty much ignore frame rate, mirror view distance, that's how far the cars disappear. 
from you when you look in the mirror it doesn't really bother me to be honest so I've got that as quite short then mirror quality again doesn't bother me so I'll have that low and then we just ignore the pretty much the, the rest of it and uh, that's how I've got it set up for VR which runs pretty smooth so let's have a look at the results of a hot lap and of a race with multiple AI in it So this is hot lap mode, it's just you and the track, nothing else and with that it just allows you to be able to push the settings just a little bit more because you don't have the AI around you. With that AI around you it absolutely canes your system. Running VR at the same time as a lot of AI canes the system but in hot lap mode you can have a really really nice clear picture and to be honest it's not bad at all it's really decent it runs smooth it, it's it's good however obviously when you're running by yourself it can get incredibly boring lap after lap after lap after lap however as you can see actually from what you you know vr mode it's it's pretty decent maybe just you could tweak maybe the shadows maybe the textures something like that uh, so that the interior of the car looks a bit better but what you're looking at now on screen is the settings that I've shown you previously So in this little mashup of videos here, I've now added AI and I'm on a quick race. AI, as I've said, absolutely canes your system. You can run it without VR and it'll be fine. As soon as you've got VR on, just the amount of processing power it takes to run AI VR on your computer, you need something big. I was running an i3 processor and a 7100 approximately a week ago and it was near impossible to have any form of AI on the grid. I just put eight cars on there and it was unplayable, totally unplayable. Having had a recent upgrade to an i7, uh, 6700, I've uh, been able to put at least 10 cars on the grid. I still believe at this moment in time that this video is going out to run a full grid with a average PC in VR is near impossible unfortunately I, part of me thinks that we're never ever going to see a full grid in VR mode unless you have the most ludicrous uh, expensive PC because so the more cars you run the greater your PC needs to be in order to have that sizable grid in the game at the time of talking about this we are on release 5 release 6 is due out shortly people still state that um, the VR is unplayable I'm of the opinion that it is playable but it's not like other games where other games just run smoother it looks a lot better you don't have to reduce the settings down to the bare minimum just to get it to run so there's still some work to be done QNOS has still got work to do and hopefully I'll be able to do a video shortly when the full game is out and VR is playable without any problems.
So that wraps up today's video. I hope it's been of some use to you in regards to VR and the settings that I use. As I say, I get quite a few people asking about how uh, it's all getting on and what you can do to improve it. So I hope it has been useful. In the meantime, a thumbs up would be handy. Click on the subscription button to subscribe to my channel for more. And I will catch up with you all again soon. Until then, see you soon.